yep, we need to make some more parts to fill that space. And since it's X231, we don't have any others in existence. So we get to make them all. Welcome back, everybody. Follow me to the bench. Luckily, it's a short walk. So as we discussed last time, we're abandoning the first attempt at the 2-3 shift fork blank, and we're starting over. And I'm going to attack this one, like I said last time, from a completely different angle. Last time I was getting the raw shape formed first, and then I was going to place it in this tool here, and then clamp it all in, and that was gonna be the guide to put the hole in the bottom instead. I'm going to put the hole in the bottom first. So this is a two and three eighths inch diameter hole saw. Fits the opening in that original shift fork perfectly. Let's start drilling. drilled happy with the placement and I located it so that I could align the template with this finished edge that just saves another step rather than having to uh, clean one up just special for this so I'm going to trace the template out here so that we can cut or know where to cut for the new blank There we are. So here's the semi-finished blank up to this point. And I threw it on the milling machine just to kind of true up the edges and do some fine tuning. I even took this flat edge down just a little bit because I needed to fit it perfectly to my alignment tool. And of course we built the tool around the original one. So you see how it cradles in just so. I made a, a mark right where that leg lines this one bottoms into the inside of that angle and I needed to get this to be as true of a fit as possible to maintain mesh with the collar in the gear so you can see we are settled in lined right in with the mark right there on the bottom of that leg and it's a good fit so the milling machine was just some some fine tuning along the two sides that are finished thus far. We're still plenty big up here. I like leaving plenty of working room material in place so that I can just decide where to best locate this tang rather than pre-cut it and then basically have myself painted into a corner trying to work around the existing shape of the blank. So the next thing I need to do is mark out for the two bins that need to go on to it. We need to replicate those 245s to get our offset. Looking at this old one, you can see how their their V blocks made such indents, like the, the point made a um, noticeable groove back there. And just considering how tight the bins are, to me, it looks like this was hot when they did it. So 
I'm going to do the same thing. And remember, guys, this is these are all mild steel components, all these shift forks, because this tractor did not need to have these components hardened. It needed to have hardened gears, but there was gonna be so few hours put on this machine at this level of development anyhow. These were just quickly assembled and not even heat treated. You can take a file to this and just take the edge right off. That's why it's got so many marks from gear teeth on it. And the gears inside of X231, all the 10X ones don't even show even a scratch because this was just so soft. So that definitely makes it easier when we're, uh, we're building the replacements. So let's decide where the bends need to be. All right, using the template, I got the first bend line transcribed onto the blank. So we should line in well. Yep, pretty good match to the witness mark from the original. So what I did for this, I built just this small little V-block set that matched all the witness marks on the original blank. Looks like we had a one inch spacing there and then just a sharp point came down on the other side. So that's how we work with this. Get you a little bit more in frame right there. And uh, this was made with this pipe and a set screw so I can just put the V portion right onto the um, 20 ton press I've got over there against the wall. So that's one less piece I actually have to hold and line in. So. Like I said before, I'm going to use some heat when I do this, so let's get set up. We'll make the bend. All right, we're still a little bit warm. You can handle it with a glove though. We'll check our work. So, get out of this glare, there we are. Yeah, our um, transfer marks, witness marks from the V-blocks are just about identical between the two. So I would say our methods are sound. We'll uh, look at the other side. Kind of lining everything up. Yeah, it's looking good. So what I'm going to do now is mark out for the upper bend that takes it back the other way. This should be a little bit easier to pull off because we're not as wide. Looking at this one, I can get the glove off now. This one's not hot. We are um, one inch distance from this crease mark to this inside crease mark. So that's a pretty easy measurement to transfer onto here. And if y'all are wondering, how I was able to uh, do that fast, how I was able to um, know where to place that under the V-block after just having a Sharpie marker line on there. What I do is I actually scribe the face of the metal a little bit so that after it's red hot, I can still see those marks. So that's how we keep everything in proper alignment. So I think the first one turned out well. Let's see if we can do it again.
Okay, it's cool enough to handle once again, so let's do another quick comparison. And yes, the backup block lines are virtual dead ringers of one another. Now we'll check the fit in the tool and look at that. I am liking that on all counts. See if we can yeah, do a backup right over the top. Outline, very good. I mean, down this side, even up to there where we stopped cutting. Yeah, excellent. So we have plenty to work with up top. Do another little test here. Okay, offset back. Line it in with the two, three gear. We're neutraled out with these other two right now. So, so far we're right in line. Offset is a perfect three quarters of an inch. So, liking it so far. Continuing on now, I drilled the 5 8 hole in the top off camera. You all have seen me drill plenty of holes. Didn't think I needed to show that. So. It was pretty simple. I just clamped the fork into the fixture and used it as a guide. So that was easy enough. Now throw the bolt in the top and we've got the collar, which is this piece right here. And run this nut down, clamps everything securely in place so that we can throw a weld bead around there and nothing's going to move around. But this is the point where we run into an ethical dilemma. So whenever I'm trying to replicate these prototype parts, I want to be as close to an absolute carbon copy as possible. But we also have a responsibility to ensure we don't have a repeat failure like happened with this two, three fork. We know that's a weak point right there. This upper bend is so tight and it gets so narrow right there. It needs some additional support. We can compare that to the production fork. They added that gusset right there. They knew that they needed a little bit of help on that. So I decided to also gusset my recreation of the 2-3 um, the fork. So this is where, no matter which way I went with it, I'm not gonna be happy. You know, I, I don't, I don't want to have to add this piece, but I think uh, it's wise to do so. Just because we need to protect the investment, we need to make sure this fork doesn't break like this one did and you know potentially cause even more damage. So couple that with the fact this is not the original one by this point anyway. This is a complete redo, so I don't think putting that gusset in there is going to detract from it in any way. I think it's, um, it's only going to help. So we've got everything in place to begin the welding. So let's just get it done. Got to make it just right now. Got the glove a little hot. <laughs> well, it's cooled down enough to handle, so I threw an extra clamp on there as well just to uh, make sure we had some down pressure on the fork end, just in case anything wanted to uh, heat up and move. So let's just see what it looks like. All right, so that tightened up. Scared myself there for a little bit, thinking I'd maybe welded the, <laughs> the fork to the bolt, but um, let's have a look at it. Here's our gusset in place, so there's no turning back now. Let's just see if we distorted that collar a little bit from the heat. 
No? I bet we're on. Yep, yeah, we're on the, the blank, the fork end of it. That makes sense. That was the thinnest part. So I think I'll um, chase that with a 5 8 reamer real quick. Return that back to um, proper dimension. Okay, that's much better. So to finish off the upper contour of it, I took a ball peen hammer and dimpled my pattern piece. It's just gasket material anyway, so that it sets down into that, um, that 5 8 hole top. So that was going to be the easiest way to accurately transfer it that I could think of. So with everything else lined up, finish off that side profile. We have this one and the top I'm going to leave a little bit long. Not quite an eighth of an inch, but I, I like leaving material to work with. And we're missing a little bit on this corner right here. So continue this line straight up, square it off. It's much easier to make all this stuff shorter than it is to make it longer again. So we just need to trim most of that um, excess material off of the end of the blank. We'll get it looking more like this. You can see we're severely worn, rounded on the top. That's why I left extra there. We'll just custom size this once we get it in the transmission, but um, we're just gonna replicate what they did here. They left all the grinder marks, the stone marks in it. Of course, these need to be flat here and there for clearance by the other forks. We need to uh, square it off really well up there. Lots of grinder work. Okay, everybody, there's the new fork. Made just like the old one in every way except for that gusset right there, even down to transferring those V-blocked witness marks. Flipping them over, they look even more like one another with the exception of I left this top portion, again, plenty big because we're going to custom tailor that once the transmission cover is on and we're starting to engage that with the shifter. But... Uh, I'll consider it a success up to this point. We have another special tool that has absolutely no use <laughs> whatsoever left in it. Our old template back there. Let's do some test fitting over here. So I've got just loosely the other three rails and fork sets loaded. And it is tight, but it will drop down in there. And we'll tentatively this is a lot easier with two hands. I should just tripod this camera again. Yeah, we're gonna need to. Locate both of these dogs on each side. Okay, so there, that's better. As you can see, we have quite a lot more material on top of the new fork than what is left on the surrounding ones. And once again, everybody, all of these pieces in here, the rails, these dogs, the forks, everything is just mild steel. This was just a proof of concept vehicle. Okay, they never intended for it to get the amount of hours on it that it ended up putting in. So we're just gonna leave this new fork mild steel as well. I don't know how many hours are on these, but really the rest of them don't look bad at all. So wear-wise. So obviously they do just fine, especially for this is just going to be a parade tractor. As long as it can climb onto the trailer, back itself back off and do a circle around a show.
that's literally all this thing's going to do from here on out. So I know we don't have to go any further with um, metallurgy there. So the next issue we have, watch how much this wobbles around when I spin the rail. See how that just, it floats side to side and up and down? That's because the 2-3 shift rail has a horrible bend in it. Because why not? This is X231. You know, that just, that's to be expected anymore. But um, looking at everything in here, clearances, all is good. And yep, we're neutral out. We have a good spin. Nothing dragging, nothing contacting. Happy with the fit all around. So let's take this back apart. 2-3 rail that has the horrible bend in it. New fork out. Now, the um, gear number four shift rail also has a bend in it. Likely was damage incurred from that old shift fork breaking. So we'll take this rail out as well. That has the separate dog. Pull that out of the number four fork. This one is not bent as bad, but it still needs correcting. So that means we have two rails total we have to make. And to wrap up, out with the old, in with the new, tomorrow's work is ready to go. Hope you all enjoyed this episode. I'm going to get slamming on those rails, see if we can keep this ball rolling and maintain forward momentum. Hope to see you all back again.